بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد uh, Before the Jum'ah prayer we usually take this time to answer any questions from the community uh, The question that I actually received right before the Jum'ah prayer and I was actually planning on asking or, or answering is a question about is it permissible to work in industries that be, might be mixed with things that we consider haram. So what are some of these industries? Uh, for example, if I work in delivery, if I'm delivering pizza, or if I work for USPS, or if I work for UPS, or I work for FedEx, for example, all of these companies, they deliver a mixture of things. You have things that are halal and you have things that are haram. So if I work in the pizza delivery, for example, some of the things I will deliver are going to be sausage and pork. Uh, if I work in UPS or USPS or FedEx, I might even be delivering some alcohol. I might even be delivering some illicit magazines, right? I might even be del delivering some illicit material. So is it okay for me to work in all of these industries? So this leads to a number of things. You're not just talking about drivers anymore, right? You're talking about drivers, uh, you're talking about people who work in logistics, uh, you're talking about people who even work in the uh, storage houses and they're moving things around. There are, you're talking about cashiers, right? If you work at a supermarket, uh, if you're working at a 7-Eleven, or you're working at any of these convenience stores. So there are a few things that we need to understand when we're dealing with a lot of these issues. Uh, number one, there is a there's an issue in usul, there's an issue in legal thoughts which talks about sharia. Are the disbelievers required to act on sharia laws? Like so for example, is a non-Muslim woman required to wear hijab? Is a Jewish man required to abstain from alcohol? Right? These are different rules that we apply on ourselves as Muslim. Do those same rules now apply to non-Muslims? Like for example, is it haram for a Christian to eat pork? It's a valid question. So you have khidaf. There is a difference of opinion amongst the scholars. Uh, you have three of the madahib. The Shafi'is, the Madikis, and the Hanabira. They say that the Sharia actually does apply on these individuals. And what is going to happen on the Day of Judgment is that they will be held accountable for their shirk and they will be held accountable for not, for not following the Sharia. The Hanafis say no. They say the Hanafis say that the requirement from the non-Muslim is only one, that he become Muslim. This is the only requirement. And if that is the case, then all of these other rules don't actually apply to them, and they use the proof that the Prophet Muhammad when people would come to him to rule, he would send them back to their own judges unless they chose the Sharia ruling. So if we base the principle off that, you'll have a group of scholars that will say that working in Giant, for example, or working for UPS, for example, or working for Pizza Hut, for example, they will say, this is haram, and you can't do this. And then you'll have another group of scholars who will say, okay, since they're not expected to follow those rules, it is permissible to work in these industries. And why is that? Because you are not the one who is providing the, you are selling a particular service. So when I work as a cashier, what service am I selling? Am I selling pork and alcohol and uh, fruits and vegetables? Am I selling those things as a cashier? No, I'm not. The thing I'm selling is I'm selling my time in punching the information into the machine. That's what I'm selling as a cashier. And if I'm a driver, am I selling the pizza? No, I'm selling the delivery service right? as, a, as an individual. If I'm a driver, for example, or even in a taxi, if I'm a taxi, what am I selling? I'm selling a specific service. So if I look that I'm selling a specific service and I'm not adding to the spreading of evil. So for example, is, for example, uh, pork as harmful as alcohol? If an individual eats pork, where are the harms? The harms are in the individual. If I sell alcohol, if I sell lottery, prostitution, these are much more harmful to society, right? They're not as harmful to the individual. Well, they're harmful to the individual, but they're also harmful to the society. So if an individual works in these stores and he works in these places, as long as the majority of things in that industry, whether it be UPS, whether it be Pizza Hut, whether it be 7-Eleven, whether it be Giant, as long as the majority of the things in those places are halal, 
it is permissible to work in those places if this is the opinion that you follow. Uh, on, the, on the other note, so for example, being a driver, like we said, if I deliver for Safeway or if I deliver for Giants, the majority of things in those grocery stores are Giants. So therefore, it is permissible to deliver those things. Can I now deliver for Budweiser? Absolutely not. Can I deliver for a company that only sells pork products? Absolutely not. Right? There, this there's going to be no difference of opinion on. The difference of opinion is only going to come in if the majority of what is being sold in that company, in that corporation, is haram or not. And when we look at companies like FedEx or UPS or any delivery company, again, that company is not selling the item. So UPS doesn't sell alcohol. FedEx doesn't sell pork. USPS doesn't sell illicit magazines. There are people who are selling those things. Their service is, when I go to USPS or I go to UPS, what am I paying for? I'm paying for the delivery. I'm not paying for the item. These are two separate things. Paying for the item and then paying for the service. The service, in and of itself, as long as it's halal, and the majority of things that are being sold through that service is halal, it is therefore halal to work for that service, and, and Allah knows best. The second layer of this now is owning the business itself. So is it permissible for me to own Giant? Is it permissible for me to own a ShopRite? Is it permissible for me to own any of these companies that have a mixture of things? This can become very problematic on layers. The first layer, if we assume and we take the opinion that it's permissible to eat the meat and sell the meat here, that takes care of one problem. But now, if my business has pork, it has alcohol, and it has lotto, even with the pork, there might be able to bring an exception for that because like we said, the people who are consuming it, it is permissible for them. And on top of that, the, pork, the consumption of pork, the limit to the harm is to the individual. This does not excuse alcohol and it does not excuse lottery. When we talk about alcohol and lottery, these are things that actually cause more fitna and more facade in the society. They cause more harm in the society and there is no excuse for these. These, these cannot be excused. And like I said, even though we might find excuses for some of these other industries, these two industries we cannot find an excuse for, just like we cannot find an excuse for prostitution. These cause problems within communities, they cause problems within society, they cause problems between individuals, and the greater harm that these cause is the reason that we can't find an excuse for them. Uh, this also has to do with certain industries, for example, that might be gender specific. For example, uh, selling gold rings. If I'm a jeweler, is it permissible for me to sell gold rings to non-Muslims? And the same ruling here would apply, is that the manufacture of the gold ring itself is permissible. Just like when the Prophet وسلم, he was gifted a silk jubba, right? He was, he was gifted a silk garment. He sallallahu alayhi wa he said, give it to so-and-so. If it was haram, he would have had it destroyed. The, the problem comes in in the use. So if somebody is using it for a haram means, then this is, becomes a problem. And again, you will find within the Hanafis that they, this is something that they would actually uh, allow. They would allow the selling of it, but they would not allow the wearing of it for the men. Uh, and because you're selling it to individuals who don't have that same prohibition, then this is something that wouldn't be as problematic. And it's a similar situation with the, the pork. So for example, if a man wears gold, the problem that he's creating is for, again, it is for himself. It is not a societal problem like we had said with alcohol or like we had said with, uh, uh, these, uh, with prostitution and with lottery, right? So get gambling and all of these other things, these are extremely problematic that uh, we don't have any excuse uh, for. So in general, these are the, the guidelines and these are the spectrum of opinions that you will find. Uh, you will have scholars who will tell you working in any of these industries, even if it's a small amount, it is haram. And you will have others who say, as long as the overwhelming majority of what is in those industries is halal, it is okay to work in those industries. This can even apply to specific jobs in a particular industry. Uh, and you know, some, some might be confused with the example of the cashier, but if I ask the same question, okay, what about the janitor? Is it okay for me to clean giant? 
I don't think there's anybody who would say, no, you can't clean in Giants. Well, there's a specific service that he's offering for the same company, just like there's a specific service that the cashier is offering uh, for that company. So it's important to understand that. And even within industries that we might think is overwhelmingly haram, like for example, banking, are there certain positions in a bank that might be permissible? Yes. So you have, for example, risk assessment officers who talk about where to put certain investments. Right? What are they doing? All they're doing is they're assessing a particular company, is this a good investment or not? That's all that they do. And there are people who will invest in that. It's very different than being someone who's they're directly involved, for example, like a loan officer. Or even a teller. What, is it, what does a teller do? A teller is providing a very specific service. That's, it's not like somebody who's directly involved in the Ribawi transactions. So it's important for us to always understand what these jobs are, and it's important for us to understand how to deal with them. Uh, the reason that we even talk about these things is because we live in a very restrictive society for us as Muslims. Right? There, there are many restrictions that we have, and we have to understand as Muslims what is the best way for us to protect our religion while learning how to navigate these restrictions within society. And Allah knows best.